whatever you find in life, there's a place for it. And life is here. And if it's not lovely, if it's not, if in, in your experience it's not serving you, then I invite inquiry. It's been a problem I've had a lot, and um, it's made me weary sometimes of the work. Um, and wondering whether I'm just covering something up There's to come a special back. special place just for that. The third question, how do you react? Notice what happens when you believe the thought. And, and for you, it, it, it would be to expressly go into it with what you're experiencing. Like, how, do you, how does it feel when you believe that thought? And to sit in that and, and, and invite emotions. And I would, as I was, mm, this, I, don't, I don't know how to speak of this, but as I was coming back in, which is not possible, then, and these emotions would arise. Maybe I'd be walking in a, in a marketplace with people all around in a big sterile mall or something. And, and the emotions, I, I might just sit on a bench and just, if there was a scream to it, if, but I would more often just go sit on the ground against a wall. And I met the human race there, this, you know, the human race out of my true nature. And they would, they would say, can I help you? That's who we are. Um, would you like a tissue? Do you need a ride home? Are you lost? Is there anyone that I can call to help you? It went on and on and on. And some people would walk way around me, and, and which was kind. How do you react? How does it feel when you believe that thought? So how do you react when you believe the, the thought? Emotions arise. That's what you're more in touch with than anything. So invitation to open up that third question for you. And I don't have to change the emotions. I can just experience them as they are. Yes. And, and I, am, I don't invite anyone here to do it the way I did. You know, do it in a practice at home and be kind to yourselves. and. And you might um, event eventually understand there's no harm, and and um, and if you're in a hurry like I was, Thank you. Mm -hmm. in a hurry meaning as mind happens, I just it's so don't you want to know? Don't you want to know? See, there's 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 something as powerful as working with world leaders and that's working with yourself because the world you live in you are the leader and you affect everyone and everything around you and that is how the past stays so vivid it's how the mind just can how the ego can just hold you in a position of I am basically traumatized uh, what do I suggest for them and that is to um, to do the work with someone that has been there you know on the work.com we have facilitators listed and their profiles are there and some of them mention trauma and some of them are are veterans of wars and and traumatized from gang rapes as you say and from all kinds and you, you you find someone there their pictures are there and then you can you can read their profile and if you relate to it then then I suggest that that person you know call and just see if it's if, if you feel a trust there and and um, and and then we have the nine-day school for the work and everyone can't afford to take that much time out of their lives and or that much money out of their bank account and but the purpose of that is an immersion in the work for nine days only that where we go through you know prejudice and fear and terror and communication and 
and the physical body and you know all the segues that the ego would would um, basically it's the first three years of of life out of that that experience and and how it was lived and so that kind of immersion for the people who can afford those two things the money the time but the work is always free and those facilitators if you call them if you don't have the funds for it then most of them if not all of them will always work with you they just can't resist they know what it what it is to suffer and what it is to be um, free of what some of the things they've survived and are still surviving what I suggest for people in current physical pain that and it really helps if you've done the work for a while because you understand how to get still how to get present and how to focus so um, and for people who can't you know I really don't you know everyone's invited in that pain just to to be with it locate where it is in the moment you feel it and then play with all pain is either remembered or anticipated just like everything else so it's either remembered remembered or anticipated and then you begin to see that there isn't anything in between. In other words, no pain. If it's remember anticipated, there's a center place there where there is no pain, there's no suffering, there's no, there's, a, it's a beautiful thing to discover. So I invite people in pain, since they're in pain anyway, to just get still with it. Mm -hmm. um, he, can you give me um, a statement? Okay. So it's usually the personal statement about myself. Okay. So you're angry because uh, she hurt me. Okay. So she hurt you. Okay, so everyone find a place where she or he hurt you. Maybe they hurt your feelings, maybe they hit you, maybe they uh, walked out on you, maybe they whatever, insulted you. Okay, so everyone focus on that moment in time, that situation. So he she hurt you. Okay, so the first question is, is it true? So now you look at that moment in time. You know, maybe you're in the kitchen, or maybe you're on your cell phone, but get that image in your head and that's your anchor so she hurt you is it true so now you're going to witness the image you're going to witness from here there maybe you can get in touch with what she said what she did how she looked look deeply into her eyes she hurt me is it true can I absolutely know that it's true she hurt me so you continue to meditate on this, this, this image, that moment in time. And then notice how you react. What happens when you believe the thought she hurt you? And then you witness that moment in time and you see, did you hurt her back? Did you give her the look? Did you get cold? Did you become just silent, stop speaking? Did you storm out of the room? Did you look hurt? Maybe more hurt than you really felt? <laughs> Good one, huh? Very subtle. You meditate on that moment in time. How do I react? What happens when I believe the thought? And then you begin to notice at some point you're witnessing images and you're seeing them from a position now that you were too invested to see them in see it in then at that time so you begin to understand that that how little you actually see of the world you begin to see what you're thinking and believing about the situation in that moment when you move to, to question four the last one who would you be 
Who or what would you be without the thought she hurt me? And so now you witness, you just witness, get very still, your story drops and just witness. And then you see, you begin to get so connected with that person because it ceases to be personal. And you see. And then you begin to get connected with their eyes and you begin to see maybe fear. You know, they're not being cruel, they're frightened. Whatever you see, you see. But you stay until you see. Get connected. And then when you turn it around, which gets to your question, she hurt me, turned around, I hurt her. Well, what does that mean? Well, I've got the answer. I saw it when I saw how I react when I believe the thought. So I'm going to look again and see what else, because now I'm focused on that, on that particular turnaround. I hurt her. Okay, in that situation, where did I hurt her? And then we begin to see these subtle ways of being as a result of what we're believing. She hurt me. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, honey. But you are seeing her as her. That her in your head? You think that's her. But this is not her. This is a mistaken identity. So. If she says, no matter what she said or did, if she says, good morning, honey, if you can't, if you're not connected and say, good morning, honey, then you're not clear about who's who, what's what, when's when. <laughs> okay, so do you see any other turnarounds? She didn't hurt me. Okay, what did she actually say? What did she actually say? Maybe she said, you're a fool. She didn't hurt me. She called me a fool. She didn't hurt me. I'm working that turnaround. She didn't hurt me. She didn't hurt me. She called me a fool. Okay, and, and you can get great freedom from these turnarounds. It's just another place where meditating on a moment in time. So if someone calls me a fool, if you've questioned that, let's say she calls you a fool and then you question it, or even if you don't, you become aware of, like if someone here calls me a fool, I'm so clear you're right. <laughs> I've done my work. What am I not? So, if someone calls me a fool and I'm hurt, I'm not open to that wisdom. If it hurts, they've said something wise and I haven't contemplated. If someone says you're wrong, if you don't see that as a gift, that can take you in. I mean, if someone says, Katie, you're wrong. Well, you know, that's something to consider. That's really something to consider. I mean, there's nothing wasted. But the old way, the old, the old paradigm, someone says, Byron, Katie, you are, you're wrong. I say, what do you mean I'm wrong? You're the one that's wrong. It's war, isn't it? And who started it? I did. I didn't go in and contemplate it. I went out, I attacked. All they said was the truth. That I haven't recognized yet. Defense is the first act of war.